Hello. We, uh, we started a, last, uh, a new chapter last uh, uh, week, and this is about uh, lenses in general and uh, also optical instruments. I introduced the subject of, uh, of lenses by finding the image point for a thin lens where we have given the radius of curvature of this surface as well as of that surface. And we found that the equation that relates object and image distance looks very much like a mirror equation if we uh, assume that the inverse of the focal length is given by n glass over n air minus 1 times the average of the uh, or the addition of the inverse curvatures of the, uh, of the two surfaces. And this is also called the uh, lens maker's equation. We have the lens equation, oops, sorry, 1 over di, not di, uh, which is just like the, uh, the mirror equation, and also the magnification equation, which relates image and, uh, and object distance, is the same as for the mirror. And if we plug in an object distance of infinity, then we have parallel rays that come in, and the image distance is the, uh, is the focal distance. If the uh, focal length is positive, then it's a converging lens, and if it's negative, it's a diverging lens. And a diverging lens looks something like this, so we have to invert the curvature for, uh, for the lens that we derived in the previous slide. And so uh, it looks thinner in the middle than on the edges. And optometrists and uh, ophthalmologists uh, use lens power rather than focal length, uh, which is just inversely related to the focal length. And the unit in which they are measured is diopter, and one diopter is one per meter. So a one diopter lens has a, a focal length of one meter. And uh, we can make uh, various types of lenses. This one would be double convex, or uh, this one would be planar convex. This one would be double concave. And we can also form lenses like this, which uh, in this case would be a convex uh, meniscus. If you have a parallel rays uh, striking a lens, a converging lens, then they are focused in the focal point. If there's an angle to it, then it's still focused in the focal plane, but no longer at the focal point. And you can use that uh, to start fires with converging lenses, like so. Uh, if you have a big enough lens, then all the optical, uh, all the sunlight is focused in, into one point and the absorbed heat is, uh, is enough to set wood on fire. So as an example for the lens maker equation, uh, we consider a convex meniscus lens, and it's made from glass, and the glass has an index of refraction of 1.5, and the radius of curvature of the convex surface is 22.4 centimeters and the other one is uh, 46.2 centimeters. And the question is, uh, what is the focal length? And where would the image be if an object is placed two meters away? And uh, for the answer, we use the uh, lens maker equation. So we first need the difference, uh, uh, the ratio of the index of refraction of glass and air. So air, we assume, is one. So we have this ratio, we subtract one, so this gives us one half. And then we add uh, the two inverse curvatures, which are these two terms. And this one has a minus sign because it's curved the opposite way. And if we plug in the numbers, we get a focal length of 87 centimeters. And since this number is positive, uh, the lens is converging. And if we turn uh, the lens around, then all we do is we switch this term on this side and that term on that side, and so we get the same answer. So it's a uh, converging lens where the uh, light comes from the left or from the right. Now we can find the image distance for an object as we usually do uh, with the mirror or the lens equation. So uh, it's uh, one over the image distance is one over the focal length minus one over the object distance, or one over 87 centimeters minus 1 over 200 centimeters. 
And that gives us 154 uh, centimeters for the image distance. For this first calculation, let's, uh, let's go back to the... So the equation that is used is this one, uh, or the lens maker's equation, which, if you know the index of refraction and the two curvatures, give you the uh, inverse of the focal length. So we can form uh, uh, ray diagrams uh, for lenses as well as we do for mirrors. And so for mirrors, we had that parallel rays uh, get reflected into focal rays. Focal rays get reflected into parallel rays. The central ray is reflected under equal angle. So if we define a symmetric point, which is uh, at the same distance as the object and the same height underneath, then uh, the central ray will reflect through that point. And finally, the concentric ray, one that goes through the center of the sphere, which is uh, located two times the focal distance away from the, uh, from the mirror, it will get reflected onto itself. And for the lens, the only difference is that the reflection side of this image gets uh, put on the other side. And so we can form the same rays. So let's do this one by one. Let's start with a parallel ray. So for the mirror, it gets reflected through the focal point. For the lens, it gets uh, refracted through, through the focal point. Then uh, the uh, focal ray, uh, for the mirror, it's reflected parallel. And for the lens, it is refracted parallel. Then the central ray uh, gets reflected through that symmetric point. And for the... Uh, Lens, it's actually quite easy. This is simply a line that goes through the center of the lens. So it also goes through that symmetry point, which is in this case located on the other side of the lens. But it's very easy to draw the central <coughs> ray for the lens because it goes through the um, middle of the lens. And it's just a straight line. And finally, uh, for the uh, concentric ray, which is the easiest for the, uh, for the uh, spherical mirror because it just reflects onto itself. In the case of the lens, it is the ray that goes from uh, through minus double the focal length and then is refracted back so that it goes to double the focal length. And then, of course, once we have those four rays, we can find uh, the image which in the case of the mirror is on the, uh, on the same side of the mirror, and the case of the lens is on the other side of the lens. And in this case, it's a, uh, it's a, a real image for both mirror as well as lens. So if you have a diverging lens or a, a convex mirror, then we can form this, uh, the same analogy. So we have the parallel ray like this, and it gets reflected as if it came from the focal point. And same for the lens, for the diverging lens, it gets refracted as if it came from the focal point. The inverse, uh, the, uh, the focal ray, if you have a ray that uh, seems to hit the focal point, it gets reflected parallel, ray number two. And same for the uh, diverging lens, a ray aimed at the focal point uh, gets refracted parallel. The uh, uh, central ray, that's the same as for the converging. In the case of the mirror, it goes through the uh, symmetry point. In the case of the uh, lens, it is just a straight line. The concentric ray, so uh, for, the, uh, for these convex mirrors, it's the same as for the concave mirror. It gets reflected onto itself. And for the lens, uh, you aim a ray at twice the focal length, and it gets refracted as if it came from twice the focal length. So that's ray number four, and we again can uh, uh, form an image, which is uh, uh, on the other side of the mirror, and on the same side uh, for the diverging lens. So ray tracing works just like it did for, uh, for mirrors. 
So uh, what happens uh, to the image of an object if the top half of a lens is covered by a piece of cardboard? Let's find this out in, uh, in reality. So here I actually have a, a, a planar convex lens, I think, uh, that uh, makes an image, a real image uh, that is uh, upside down. So you see the, uh, the object here and uh, the, uh, the image there. And the question is, uh, what happens if I cover half of the uh, top half of the lens and uh, step away? Then you can see that uh, the image is, uh, is not affected. Also, if I do uh, cover the bottom half, even if I cover uh, most of the lens, uh, the image, image is still there. It, all that happens is it gets dimmer. And so the, uh, the answer for why that is, is that if we block some of the rays, that doesn't mean that, uh, that the image doesn't form. It just means that there, uh, there's less light intensity because uh, rays go through every part of the, uh, of the lens. And as long as there's any part of it still transmittent, uh, there will be an image. Uh, depending on uh, what you use for blocking, uh, you may find an out-of-focus out of image of the blockage. So for example, if I use my hand, you can sort of see, okay, there's something like fingers. Uh, it isn't really in focus. And the closer I move to the lens, the less of that will happen. Let me uh, uh, make a point that was already made for the, uh, for the mirror. Uh, our eyes are built so that they can make images of uh, distant objects, which have almost parallel rays, or close objects, which are diverging rays. But it cannot focus on converging rays. And so if the, uh, if the eye is closer to the lens uh, than the image, the image will become blurry, just like it was for this uh, spherical mirror. Virtual images can always be seen since they are on the other side. It's also like, uh, uh, like the mirror. So to solve lens problems, we uh, use the same procedure as solving mirror problems. We always draw a ray diagram even if there's an analytic calculation later on, we apply the lens equation and the magnification equation. And we pay attention to the sign of the distances and heights. And the object distance is bigger than zero if the object is placed on the side of the lens where the light is coming. And the image distance uh, is bigger than zero if it's on the opposite side as the object. And up is positive and down is negative for the image heights. And at the end, uh, we check the analytic solution with the ray diagram to uh, whether it makes sense. So let's uh, do an example. And the examples look exactly like the examples for the mirror. Let's assume we have given an object, in this case uh, a leaf, that is placed one meter away from the uh, <coughs> that is placed one meter away from the lens. So the object distance is 100 centimeters. And uh, the question is, where is the image and how big is it going to be if the leaf is 7.6 centimeters high? We use the, uh, to answer that, we use the lens equation. We plug in five centimeters for the uh, focal length of the lens and the 100 centimeters for the object distance. And we find that the image distance is 5.26 centimeters. And since that's a positive number, it means that the image is on the other side of the lens, and it is a, a, a real image. So uh, we now use the magnification equation, which tells us that the magnification is given by minus the image distance over the object distance. So that's the 5.26 centimeters over the 100 centimeters. And so the magnification is 0 0.0526. And if we then multiply that with the leaf height, we get that the image height is minus 0.4 centimeters. Because the magnification is negative, that means that the image is inverted. 
Let's make another example. Let's have an object that is placed 10 centimeters from a, a 15 centimeter focal length uh, converging lens, so closer than the focal length. And the uh, problem is to determine the image position and size, both analytically and with a ray diagram. For the analytical calculation, we just plug in the numbers as before, and we get an image distance of minus 30 centimeters. And because it's negative, that means that the image is on the same side as the object, and the image is virtual. For the magnification, uh, again, we use the same equation. We get 30 centimeters divided by 10 centimeters, so the magnification is 3. And that means that the image is, uh, is virtual and upright. Let's now look at the, uh, at the ray diagram, how that looks like. So here we have our object, and we have the parallel ray, which gets refracted to go through the focal point. And we imagine that this ray is continued like this. And then the focal ray, which seems to come from the focal point, is refracted parallel. And then uh, the central ray is unaffected. And those three rays, if we continue them back, they meet at the uh, image location. The image is, as the analytical solution said, is bigger than the uh, original uh, object. It is a virtual image, and so uh, the, uh, it seems like the analytical calculation is done correctly. Uh, we can do the same thing for diverging lenses. In this case, the problem is where should we place a small insect if a 25 centimeter focal length diverging lens is to form a virtual image 20 centimeters from the lens on the same side as the object. In this case, we have to use negative focal length, so that's why a minus sign appears in the formula. And of course, here we solve for 1 over do rather than 1 over di. And because the image distance is negative, since it's on the same side as, uh, as the insect, we get a plus sign in the formula here. If you plug in the numbers, we find that the uh, object distance must be 100 centimeters. And the magnification in this case is uh, 20 centimeters over 100 centimeters, or 0 0.2. So the image of the insect is going to be even smaller than the insect. To find out what happens with combination of lenses, uh, one applies the lens equation and magnification equation sequentially for uh, one lens at a time. So the image of the first lens becomes the object of the second lens, the image of the second lens becomes the object of the third lens, and so on. And the total magnification then is the product of the individual magnifications. So it is basically no different than finding just uh, one image. Uh, we just repeatedly use the same equation. So let's do this with an example. Let's say we have two converging lenses, A and B, uh, with a focal length of 20 centimeters and 25 centimeters. They are placed 80 centimeters apart, as it is shown in, uh, in the picture here. An object is placed 60 centimeters in front of the first lens, and the question is where is the position and the magnification of the final image that is formed. And so we first concentrate on uh, lens A, so this one. So for lens A, we calculate the image distance, or the inverse of the image distance, as uh, 1 over its focal length minus 1 over its object distance. So the object distance is 60 centimeters. That gives us an image distance for lens A of 30 centimeters. So since uh, the image distance is positive, it means it's on the other side of the lens. And we can find out what is the object distance for the second uh, lens. So our image uh, is for lens A is located here. Uh, we know that this distance is 30 centimeters. We know that this distance is 80 centimeters. Therefore, this distance must be 50 centimeters. And we get uh, for the object distance of the second lens uh, 50 centimeters. We run through the same equation again. And we find that the image of lens B is at 50 centimeters. And the image is real, and it is upright. 
And uh, the reason why it is upright is when we find out the total magnification, which is minus dIA over dOA times minus dIB over dOB, the two minus signs cancel. So uh, we have minus 30 over 60 times minus 50 over 50. And so the total magnification is 0 0.5. The total magnification is positive. That means that the, uh, the image is uh, the same orientation as the original. As another example, we can uh, use a converging lens to measure the focal length of a diverging lens. So if they are brought in contact with each other, as shown in this, in this picture, we can measure the combined uh, focal lengths. And, uh, in this case, the combined focal length is 28.5 centimeters. So the combination is a converging lens. So if the converging lens has a known focal length of 16 centimeters, then the question is, what is the focal length of the diverging lens? And so uh, to answer that, first of all, since we have parallel rays coming in, uh, the object distance is infinity. And the uh, image of the converging lens by itself is just its focal length. And that becomes minus the object distance of the diverging lens. And the reason why it's just minus is because they are touching each other. So in other words, the object distance for the diverging lens is minus 16 centimeters. And we can now uh, uh, plug that into the equation for the diverging lens. So uh, we, uh, we have uh, the diverging lens focal length, the inverse of it, is the inverse of the uh, object distance plus the inverse of the image distance. And if you plug in the number of uh, minus 16 centimeters and uh, 28.5 centimeters, we get a, a diverging lens a focal length of minus 36.48 centimeters. Uh, how do we get that? So uh, the image of the converging lens, which is sort of indicated by the dashed line here, if the, those two lenses are right on top of each other, so we assume they have no thickness, uh, all of those equations are valid only for thin lenses. So we assume they have no thickness. So that means this image distance is the same as the, uh, as the negative uh, object distance for that one. So the reason why the image of the converging uh, lens is minus the object distance for the diverging lens is because they are touching each other. The reason why the image distance for the uh, converging lens is its focal length is because these rays are parallel and therefore the object distance for the uh, converging lens is infinity. But you can also simply think of it, if you have parallel rays for the converging lens, then they get focused into its focal length. So that is the, uh, the, uh, the critical assumption is that uh, those two lenses are, are touching each other. And perhaps now it becomes a bit more apparent why the uh, optometrists like to use inverse focal length as, uh, to, uh, to calculate. Because one can think of this equation here as simply uh, the addition of, uh, of inverse focal lengths. So if you uh, have given a certain number of diopters and you add another lens with another uh, number of diopters, then the total co combination, as long as they are touching, is the sum of the diopters. So it's very, uh, very easy to, uh, to, to use the inverse focal length. For this uh, method to measure the uh, focal length works, of course, only if the magnitude of the uh, converging lens uh, focal length is bigger than that of the diverging lens focal length, because otherwise you, you don't find a focus point. The focus point will be uh, virtual if the combination is a diverging lens. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about cameras. The word camera comes from uh, uh, camera obscura, which means dark chamber in Latin, and it was usually meant as a, a pinhole camera or also called a magic lantern. 
A pinhole blocks all rays except for uh, 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 those passing through it and an image is formed. So if we have a, a pinhole here and we have a projection screen there and we have an object here, then only, uh, only one ray goes through and therefore we have an image formed here. And the image is real and it's, uh, and it's upside down. And the problem with this procedure is that the image tends to be very dim because only one ray uh, is, is allowed to pass. And you can fix that by making the pinhole a little bit bigger. But then instead of uh, nice points, if you allow more than one ray going through, then you get sort of uh, uh, circles. And that means that the image will, uh, will become blurry. To fix this, uh, this problem that you either have very dim images or, uh, or you have uh, blurry images, the addition of a, a converging lens is a big improvement. So uh, a usual camera has a converging lens, then it has an adjustable cover of that converging lens. Uh, so that one can change the, uh, the size of the opening and therefore con control the brightness uh, and the sharpness of the picture. Then there's a shutter to limit the exposure to a certain amount of time. And finally, there's a light sensor or a film in the back. So if we focus a camera, what we mean by that is the disadvantage of the lens is that uh, an image is only formed at a particular distance. This kind of camera works at any distance between uh, image and, uh, and uh, pinhole, but also for any distance for the object to pinhole. But for the uh, converging lens, this is no longer true. So if we have a very distant object, those are the rays from the very distant objects, then they're imaged in the focal plane, <coughs> while a close by object is focused at a longer distance, and even though we can move this lens back and forth, we can only get one of those two images sharp. And the other image uh, will produce uh, little circles like these, which are also sometimes called circles of confusion. And therefore, either the distant object or the nearby object will, uh, will look blurry. So here's an example of, uh, of a nearby object and a distant object focused on the nearby object and focused on the distant object, and one of them uh, looks blurry. The solution to that problem is to focus on a distance that is in between and therefore get uh, both images somewhat blurry, but maybe uh, to a tolerable level. And that works as long as the so-called depth of field, which is the range of distances where the image is uh, sharp enough to be acceptable, as long as this depth of field is large enough. And to control this depth of field, we use a, a smaller uh, lens diameter, or a bigger lens diameter. So a smaller lens diameter increases the depth of field, but reduces the image brightness, just like it did for the uh, pinhole camera. The uh, so-called stop of a camera is an adjustable iris diaphragm uh, that is behind the lens and uh, partially covering it. And the opening is uh, usually given as f-stop. And f-stop means it is the ratio of the uh, focal length over the diameter of the effective opening. The bigger you make the f-stop, the less light uh, you will receive, so the image becomes dimmer and dimmer, but also your depth of field is getting bigger and bigger. And uh, finally, given that uh, both film and light sensors are cumulative, meaning that they don't work in proportion to intensity, but in, in proportion to intensity times exposure time, the shutter is built into the camera to limit the exposure. And so the brightness of a photography is proportional to the exposure time. Uh, the exposure time is, uh, is often given as a shutter speed. So, uh, of course, if your object is moving, then there's a different kind of blurry image produced if your, uh, if your uh, shutter speed is, is too slow. 
And so uh, fast moving objects need shorter exposures and therefore they need uh, uh, bigger openings and have therefore less uh, depth of field. So let's do an example. How far must a 50 millimeter focal length camera lens be moved from its infinity setting uh, to sharply focus on an object that is three meters away? And to answer that, the infinity setting uh, means that the image is formed at the focal length, so 50 millimeters. We can now use the lens equation again to find the image of an object that is 300 centimeters away. And uh, we get as an answer, this is 5.085 uh, centimeters or 50.85 uh, millimeters. And therefore, the lens must be moved by 0 0.85 millimeters to, uh, to focus on, uh, on the closer object. Another example, let's say to improve the depth of field, you stop down the camera lens by uh, two f-stops uh, from f over 4 to f over 8. What should you do uh, to the shutter speed to maintain the same exposure? And uh, to answer that, we observe that the amount of light that is admitted by the lens is proportional to the area that is uncovered. And that means it's proportional to the diameter squared. So if we uh, reduce the diameter by a factor of 2, that means that we reduce the light intensity by a factor of 4. For the same total amount of light, we need to increase the exposure time to four times as long. So for example, if the speed was originally 1 over 500, it now has to be 1 over 250. Let's uh, briefly talk about how camera films or uh, light sensors work. So uh, pictures used to be taken using a chemical film and uh, basically the chemistry of silver halide crystals changes when they're exposed to light. And uh, more recently, we have switched technology to use charged coupled uh, devices. Uh, those consist out of uh, millions of small squares called pixels. And they accumulate electric charge in proportion to the light exposure. And uh, eventually, after the uh, uh, photograph is taken, they are read out uh, sequentially. So they are read out at the edge of the photosensor. To include color information, each pixel actually consists out of uh, uh, four smaller pixels, which have color filters. And two of those pixels uh, have green color filters, and the other uh, two are uh, red and blue. And that encodes the uh, color in the picture. And as long as the density of those uh, pixels is large enough, the uh, resulting image uh, looks like a, 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 a smooth image. So as an example, let's consider a 6 megapixel digital camera. And 6 megapixels uh, means that it has 6 million pixels. And this is typically a resolution of 2,000 times 3,000 pixels on a 16 millimeter times 24 millimeter uh, CCD sensor. And the question is, uh, how sharp should the lens image be to make use of, the, uh, of this resolution? And to answer that question, uh, we find out the pixel density. So 2,000 pixels for, uh, for 16 millimeters means 125 pixels per millimeter. And the same is also true for 3,000 pixels on uh, 24 millimeters. The image therefore needs to be sharp to uh, 1 over that number, 1 over uh, 125 per millimeters, which is 8 micrometers. And you need very high quality lenses to actually do that. So in other words, the camera resolution is not limited by uh, the resolution of the CCD sensor, but by the optical quality of the, uh, of the lens, in spite of what advertisement usually stresses. So let me finish with uh, talking about the human eye. Uh, cameras are built the way they are in analogy to the human eye. So uh, a camera is like an eye. The f-stop of the eye is the iris, which is uh, an adjustable opening. There's a lens. The equivalent to the CCD is the retina on the back of the eye. Let me give you the indices of refraction. 
So for the uh, inner part of, uh, of the eye, the vitreous humor, uh, the index of refraction is 1.337, while the aqueous humor, the front of the lens, is 1.336. The lens itself has an index of refraction of 1.386 to 1.406. The retina has two special spots. Uh, the fovea has the largest concentration of optical sensors in it. And the optic nerve uh, forms the blind spot. So if we have part of the image that is located here, uh, we can't actually see it. So imaging of the human eye is uh, mostly done by the cornea. Let's go back to the cornea real quick. So the spherical, or roughly spherical surface on the top of the eye is, uh, is doing what is uh, really doing the job of the imaging. And the, uh, the lens in the eye is just uh, providing fine adjustment uh, to get a sharp image. This fine tuning is called accommodation and uh, one can define a near and a far point for the human eye. So ideally the far point is at infinity, meaning that we can see objects sharp at an infinite distance. And the near point is, uh, is typically 25 centimeters, but it varies with age. So uh, many people have, uh, just like myself, have uh, defects of the eye. Nearsighted people, uh, like myself, suffer from myopia. And that means that the far point is, uh, is less than infinity. So if I take off my, uh, my glasses, uh, I can't see you sharply anymore. You're all out of focus then. And uh, for farsighted people, it's the, uh, it's the other way around. So, uh, the, uh, their far point is bigger than infinity, so the eye has to accommodate a little bit even for, the, uh, for infinite distances, and that means that the near point is, uh, is further away than the usual 25 centimeters, or it's the phenomenon that your arms get too short to read the newspaper. Presbyopia is a similarly effective problem. You can't focus on nearby objects, and I suffer from that as well, but it is uh, purely age-related failure to fully accommodate. And corrective lenses can fix those problems. For nearsighted people, uh, you want to add uh, a diverging lens in front, and then even though uh, originally the image was out of focus for an infinitely spaced object, it is now brought to focus uh, by this additional lens. And similarly, for farsighted people, you add a, a converging lens. There's another uh, defect of the human eye, and that is a deformed uh, cornea, meaning that the curvature is different in one direction compared to the direction perpendicular to it. And that's called astigmatism. I suffer from that as well. And you can think of it uh, like if you have a cylindrical lens, which has no curvature in one direction and has some curvature in the other direction, then a point is imaged on a line rather than on a point. And you can't uh, use normal lenses to correct for that because you either adjust uh, one dimension or the other. But uh, if you use cylindrical lenses, then you can uh, correct for astigmatism as well. So let's uh, conclude with an example. So let's say uh, Sue is farsighted and her near point is 100 centimeters. And the question is, what lens power do we need for her reading glasses so that she can read at the usual distance of 25 centimeters? So that means we want a near point of 25 centimeters, and the image distance of the reading glass is the negative object distance of the eye, assuming that the two are touching, which of course in reality they do not. And in that case, we have the image distance is min minus 100 centimeters, the object distance ought to be 25 centimeters, and we can use the uh, lens equation to get the power of the lens as 0.03 per centimeter, or three per meter, which corresponds to uh, three dioptrin. So here we made the simplifying assumption that the reading glasses are sitting uh, directly on top of the eye, so it is more like a contact lens. So for the second example, for a nearsighted person, we no longer make this assumption. So now we assume that the eyeglasses are two centimeters away from, uh, from the eye, and we have a near point, 
of 17 centimeters and a far point of 12 centimeters, and the question is what kind of lens do we need to focus at infinity? So at infinity, the lens must put the image at the far point, because for the far point, uh, the nearsighted person can focus on. And that means that the image distance must be minus 17 centimeters plus the two centimeters, which is the distance between lens and eye. So this, this distance must be 17 centimeters, therefore this distance must be 15 centimeters. And then we can find, uh, same as before, the power of the lens as minus 6.7 dioptrin. If we had contacts, however, meaning uh, the two lenses are, uh, are touching, then we would only need minus 5.9 dioptrins rather than minus 6.7 dioptrins. So it's slightly different for uh, uh, contact lenses and glasses. If we then want to know what is the, uh, the close point, then uh, now we have actually given the lens and we can find out what is the near point of the eye. And for the near point of the eye, the image is at minus 10 centimeters. And we can then find the object distance as, uh, as 30 centimeters. And that object distance is then the near point of the combined system. So uh, thank you very much.